I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today, uh, as part of our Meet the Experts TV documentary panel, I'm speaking with Chloe Sarash from the Nat Geo documentary series Queens. Uh, the first question I have to ask is, um, you know, I noticed in the credits that a lot of the people who worked on this project were women, and uh, not not that that's surprising, but uh, I mean, was that a conscious choice uh, that was made uh, for the making of the series to really make it uh, uh, something that was made by women? Yeah, and you say it's not a surprise, but actually in our industry for decades, there have been very little women working in this space. So when we decided to make a series about female leadership in the natural world, we knew it had to have the authenticity of being made by a female-led team. But then we looked around and went, but how are we, how, who's going to do it? You know, the, the number of female cinematographers at this level can be counted on one hand. Uh, so we literally had to rip up the rule book of how natural history is made and start again and it was messy sometimes and we didn't always get it right but um we're really proud of the legacy we've created we brought new filmmakers up we've brought uh women from underrepresented areas up through this project um so yes queens is intentionally absolutely um a female-led team which is completely unique in this space where did the idea of doing a series about uh about powerful females and female leadership in nature uh come from well, nature documentaries take a very long time to make. So the first conversations were kind of five years ago now. Um, and we pitched an idea for a one-off, which has actually turned into the first episode of the series, um, which was about lions and hyenas, two very powerful led animal societies, filmed by the two only really women in natural history cinematography that knew them well. And we took that to Nat Geo and the brilliant exec, Janet Hanvissering there said, this is great, but let's make a series. Let's make it all about female leadership. And we thought, well, that's been done. And then we looked back through back catalogues and realized in 2024, it still hadn't been done. And then we saw this unique opportunity to make it um, a female-led series. Um, and yeah, it, it took off from there. And we it took yeah four years to make, a year of research, three years in the fil field filming, um, over 1,700 filming days, I think. So it's it's been a it's been a labor of love, but we're all incredibly proud of of what it's achieved. Um, uh, it's something that you uh, that you brought up in uh, in your answer to the last two questions. You brought up specifically um, uh, uh, nature based um, uh, cinematography, and I'm just if you I'm just just wondering if you could explain what uh, what is uh, different in nature in in that type of cinematography as opposed to regular cinematography that requires that special skill set for this. Uh, okay, so it's it's not only the, the equipment, because we're a very long way away from these animals. We want the animals to behave as they would naturally. Otherwise, we're not making a documentary. We're just making sort of animal entertainment. We want them to be doing what they do, and we want them to do that unaffected by us. So huge lenses, um, and, a, and a lot of field craft goes with that. that the specialists know the animals. They know how they're going to behave. Quite often, we're in filming vehicles, or we're using six axis gimbal rigs we're using helicopters drones i mean we borrowed a lot from hollywood and for drama for this series which is really exciting but um it may feel like you're up close to the animal and you're looking at it in its eye but that animal is a is a long long way away uh, so it takes very specialist people and it takes really hardcore people i mean some of the locations that we filmed in are, are i mean for example the the drc where the bonobos are that's a that's a three-day trek all the kit on your back and when you're there you're camping and 30 kilometers a day at least following the animals. So the women and the men that worked on this series who helped us um, are hardcore uh, cinematographers for sure. Uh, what species of uh, animals were the most challenging to tell the stories of, whether that be through Ooh. capturing the footage or putting it together? They're all challenging because as much as I write a script, they very rarely read it. So uh, we, we never quite know what we're going to get we we spend a lot of time researching and we have we speak to the experts and the people in the field that know these animals best and we go out with the intention of hoping to capture certain behavior but sometimes it works sometimes we come with nothing uh the bonobos are incredibly difficult because that's physically so challenging then if you're filming macro which is like the bees and the ants you know these are tiny tiny specialist kit um and to get that behavior you have to create places where they'll make their nests where you've adapted it so it can be filmed so there's a lot of time and research and development and hoping that the animals will take to it a lot of success and failure um filming with lions and hyenas you just got to keep up with them i mean we had 
uh, cameras rigged to four by four vehicles and we're pounding through the Ngorongoro crater, which is like that, keeping up with these hyenas who, who run at speeds. Um, in Ethiopia, we were met with civil war, so we had to get the crew out. Just we, you know, it was nothing to do with the animals. That was that was all on us. But we um we lost. We couldn't then get back to our filming location for nearly a year while the politics calmed down in that region. So I think every single show had its unique challenges. Um, but it's uh, an enormous privilege to spend time with the animals and get to know them in the way that we did. Um, uh, I uh, so I think probably the most distinctive thing about uh this is about the show is the wonderful narration that is provided by angela bassett um oh, what made angela queen. bassett was that queen of queens yes no no question no <laughs> question um what made uh angela bassett the perfect person to serve as the narrator for this series oh do you know what? from the beginning uh i was lucky enough to get to to write this series and i think i just always had angela's voice in my mind and i think we just manifested it. We manifested it as hard as we possibly could because she's she has the life experience. She has the range because each episode is very different. So she's got the range to go from sort of Shakespearean to humor, uh, heart, you know, some heartbreaking scenes. Um, but also these are stories about the female experience, whether you're an animal or a human, the, the female experience is, is universal. And we felt that her life experience would make a show that was really accessible maybe to people that hadn't watched natural history before um we didn't want the voice of god route that so um so expected in natural history we wanted to absolutely write characters that people saw themselves in saw their sisters their friends their aunts you know and and angela was just perfect for that and and her production company represents uh all those things too she you know she really backs underrepresented talent she backs women in the industry so we sent her early cuts and we prayed and we hoped and luckily she she loved our queens as much as we did. And then to have her in the recording booth saying your lines is a is a pinch me moment for sure, because she gives it everything. She's phenomenal in that studio. How did you, uh, it's, it's really interesting how you uh, frame the series with each episode. You know, like you said, the first episode is like centered on Africa with um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, lions and hyenas. And I, I'm just curious, how did you uh, decide to frame uh, this uh, this story in terms of like in terms of the episodes and what they would be what they would each be about. Yeah, there's a few things going on there. Firstly, we wanted to show different leadership styles, so we wanted to have a range across the series because just being a fem female leader doesn't necessarily mean a soft leader. We've got very soft friendship based animal societies like the bonobos, or you've got a a queen bee who's a well, she's she's not so kind, she's not so nice, and she gets her. She gets a comeuppance, but um, so that we wanted a range of leadership styles. We wanted each episode to feel like a mini movie in its own world so that you really got to get immersed in the world that these queens rule over. So each place feels very different. Um, and we just wanted variety and, you know, some big glossy, sexy animals that people want to see and some more surprising animals that people perhaps hadn't met before. So it was all about making it as entertaining as possible and as visually exciting as possible, but the hope is at the end, people have really learned something. Was there any, was there an aspect of any of the species the show covers that really surprised you, that really took, that really took you by surprise? Yeah, I think working with hyenas is always a thing. I think people have expectations of hyenas that they don't like them and that they are always cast as the villain in every Disney movie. Poor hyenas, they get a terrible rap and they're actually, in, you know, spend time with them. They're incredibly intelligent, political, I mean, not always kind, but they love their babies hard. And there's a scene in that first episode where uh, the sister who is vying for power kills her sister's daughter. So she kills her own niece as a bid for power. We have that infanticide on camera. It's never been seen before. The scientists knew that it um, that it is done, but it had never been seen before. Uh, and that was quite hard to watch. And it was quite hard to cut too, to make it palatable for an audience, but was also such a privilege to see that kind of complex politics play out in front of us. But you know, every animal society that we spent time with, we were constantly amazed by um, by the stories that were unfolding in front of us. It was a real privilege to, to sort of spend that time with them and get to know them. Well, Chloe, thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you on our panel in just a little bit. Thanks so much. <laughs>